Yo yo, it's your boy Baka again with another ASMR video. In March 21st, 1790, Thomas Jefferson belatedly arrived in New York City to assume his duties as the first Secretary of State after a five year ministerial stint in Paris. Tall and lanky, with a freckled complexion and a born hair, Jefferson, 46 years old, was taken aback by the adulation being heaped upon the new Treasury Secretary, Alexander Hamilton, who had streaked to prominence in his absence. Few people knew that Jefferson had authored the Declaration of Independence, which had yet to become a holy writ for Americans. At first, Hamilton and Jefferson socialized on easy terms with a little inkling that they were destined to become mortal foes. But their clash inside George Washington's first cabinet proved so fierce that it would spawn the two-party system in America. It also produced two divergent visions of the country's future. For Hamilton, the first Treasury Secretary, the supreme threat to liberty arose from insufficient government power. To avert that, he advocated a vigorous central government marked by a strong president, an independent judiciary and a liberal reading of the constitution. As the first secretary of state, Jefferson believed that liberty was jeopardized by concentrated federal power. When he tried to restrict through a narrow construction of the constitution, he favored states' rights, a central role for Congress, and a comparatively weak judiciary. At first glance, Hamilton might seem the more formidable figure in the classic matchup. He took office with an ardent faith in the new national government, pinned the bulk of the Federalist Papers to secure passage of the new charter and the spearheaded ratification efforts in the New York State. He therefore set to work at Treasury with more um, unrestrained gusto than Jefferson did at State. As an orator, Hamilton could speak extemporaneously for hours on end. We need to build a wall. As a writer, he could crank out 5,000 or 10,000 word memos overnight. Jefferson never underrated his foe's copious talents. Whether in person or on paper, Hamilton served up his opinions promiscuously. He had a true zest for debate and never left anyone guessing where he stood. Jefferson, more than a decade older, had the quiet, courtly manner of a Virginia planter. Jefferson, a diffident speaker, mumbled his way through his rare speeches in a soft, almost inaudible voice. Hamilton dreamed of a meritocracy, not an aristocracy. While Jefferson retained the landed gentry's disdain for the vulgar realities of trade, commerce, and finance, and he was determined to undermine Hamilton's struggle. 
Ano pa yung next po? Hmm. 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 Algumbas. Instead, the feud worsened. And in early 1793, a Virginia congressman named William Branch Giles began to harry Hamilton with resolutions, ordering him to produce, on short deadlines, stupendous amounts of treasury data. With prodigious bursts of energy, Hamilton complied with those inhuman demands, foiling his opponents. Jefferson then committed an unthinkable act. He secretly drafted a series of anti-Hamilton resolutions for Giles, including one that read, Resolved that the Secretary of Treasury has been guilty for maladministration in the duties of his office and should, in the opinion of the Congress, be removed from his office by the President of the United States. The resolution was voted down, and the effort to oust Hamilton stalled. Jefferson left the cabinet in defeat later that year. What a tragedy. <laughs> I ran away in the trees. In 1797, a journalist named James T. Callender exposed that Hamilton, while Treasury of Secretary, and a married man with four children, had entered into a year-long affair with grifter Maria Reynolds, who was 23 when it began. But an extraordinary coincidence, during Jefferson's first term as president, Callender also explored Jefferson's relationship with Sally Hemings. Callender claimed that Dusky Sally, aka the African Venus, was the president's slave's concubine, who had borne him five children. Jefferson never confirmed or denied Callender's story, but the likely truth of Hemings' affair was dramatically bolstered by DNA tests published in 1998, which indicated that the Jefferson Mill had sired at least one of Hemings' children. What the fuck you want? You shot too late. <laughs> he juked you. He juked you so bad. Cancel skull till it's done. God damn, he tanked on me. <laughs> Why did you stop flying? He just ruined it. 